In this video, we'll talk about how we can use complex numbers to help us solve partial fractions problems. So we're going into now seeing how these complex numbers can be useful for handling some of the calculus topics we discussed previously. First one here is partial fractions. So irreducible polynomials, or irreducible quadratics, became a pain when trying to solve partial fractions problems. Why is that? Well, it's because we have no way to make them zero in value substitution. Right, linear factors were great because they gave us a nice value, so x equals 2 or x equals 4. We could plug in, make that term go away, and cancel out most of the terms of my expression, leaving one or two left over that were easy to solve for. But with irreducible quadratics, we had no way to make them zero, so we couldn't get rid of them. This involves needing to solve bigger systems of equations to be able to solve out for these constants that we needed to do partial fractions. However, complex numbers now come in and save the day. Because the point is, the reason why we didn't have numbers to plug in to make these polynomials zero was because they had no real roots. But they do have complex roots. And why is that great? Because now we can plug in a complex number in for x, which will get rid of the irreducible quadratics, and then solve the rest of the equations out from there. Now it's important to realize that once you do this, your equalities that you get from the polynomial part will be now complex numbers. They won't just be real numbers, there'll be complex numbers involved. You have to be careful how you're setting these equal to each other, but if you set this up appropriately, this will give you an easy way to solve these problems that doesn't involve solving a massive system of equations to try to get there. So what's the process here? How do we do this? Well, the first couple steps are all the same as normal partial fractions. We want to find the decomposition like normal, including the irreducible polynomials that you had before. Now, we don't want to use these complex numbers to factor these irreducible quadratics to get down to all linear terms because we don't really know how to handle things like log of complex numbers. That's a very complicated topic that we don't want to get into because it's kind of crazy. And if you want to see some fun pictures, look up complex logarithms on things like Wikipedia and stuff, and you'll see some fun pictures that way. But we don't want to deal with that, so we want to leave these quadratics as before because we knew how to integrate those. And so we'll leave those alone and integrate those on their own later. But we'll use the complex numbers to find an easier way to find the coefficients. So the next you want to set up for value substitution. And by this I mean sort of clear the denominator, get just the polynomial equals the polynomial on one side with the factors and the one that was originally the problem by itself, and set that up and get ready to go. Now we're going to start plugging in numbers. We're going to plug in the numbers for the linear factors like before. And then for the quadratic factors, we're going to plug in only one of their two complex roots. I only need one of the roots here because I will get two equations out of it, one from the real part of the answer, one from the imaginary part of the answer, because Complex numbers really have these two parts going on. If they need to be equal as complex numbers, I need both the real and imaginary parts to be equal. That gives me two equations from that root. This is going to give me all the equations I need to solve for my constants, solve for the constants, and then go to the integration like normal. I will note that at this point, still repeated factors are an issue and might be more annoying to solve. But now that we handle the quadratic factors fairly easily and leave just the repeated factors as being an issue for solving out for these constants. Let's see an example of what this might look like. So I want to use complex numbers to help compute the following integral. Integral of 12x over x plus 1 times x squared plus 2x plus 5. If you remember from stuff we've done before, this here is an irreducible quadratic. Why is it irreducible? Well, let's try to find the roots. So the roots should be at x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is 20, over 2 is negative two plus or minus the square root of minus 16 over two. Well, this here is minus one plus or minus two i, because the negative root 16 will become a four i, divided by two it gives me a two i. So the roots here are complex, which means I can't factor that with real numbers, so I'm gonna leave it alone, and we'll come back to it later. Now that we have this root though, we'll be able to use that to help some of our calculations. We wanna do partial fractions, what do I get? Well, I get that I will have 12x over x plus 1, x squared plus 2x plus 5, equals a over x plus 1 plus bx plus c over x squared plus 2x plus 5, meaning that 12x equals a x squared plus 2x plus 5 plus bx plus c x plus 1. Now we need to solve for these constants. The first choice that like we've done before is plug in the solution to linear factors to make it all go away. So I'm going to plug in minus 1, and when I do that I will get minus 12 on this side equals a 
times one minus two plus five plus zero because x minus one goes away. That tells me negative 12 equals four a, so a is minus three. Now going, doing this the old way, we want to plug in probably zero to get rid of the bx term, solve for c, and then plug in some other number and write the whole expression to see what we get. But we now have complex numbers. So I'm gonna plug in the root here, which is negative one plus or minus two i, into here and see what I get. x equals negative one plus two i. I'm gonna plug in the plus version here, but I only need one root here because I'm gonna get two equations. We'll see what it looks like in a second here. So what I get then is 12 times negative one plus two i equals a, and because this is a root of this equation, I know this is zero, right? X squared plus two x plus five is zero because this is a root of the quadratic equation that I have here. And then plus b times negative one plus two i plus c times x plus one, which in this case is just two i because the plus one cancels the minus one from there. I now want to expand this out, giving me a negative 12 plus 24i on the left equals 2i times negative b plus 2bi plus c, or negative 2ib plus 4bi squared plus 2ic. And then since i squared is minus 1, I get negative 12 plus 24i equals negative 4b, because that's the i squared term, plus i times 2c minus 2b. And now from this, I get two equations using the real part and the imaginary part. So the real part here tells me that negative 12 equals negative 4b, which is going to give me that b equals 3. And the imaginary part pairs these two and tells me that 24 is 2c minus 2b. Well, I know b is 3, so 2b is 6, so 30 equals 2c, which means that c equals 15. Right from there, I have my three coefficients. I can then write on my integral again. So I had a was minus 3, so minus 3 over x plus 1. And then I have plus a 3x plus 15 over x squared plus 2x plus 5. And now we can use our normal techniques to figure out what this integral is. I'm going to rewrite this as negative 3 integral of 1 over x plus 1 dx plus 3 integral of x plus 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 5 dx. And that's our trick from before of grouping the x plus 1 because that's going to be my du in this problem and then plus a 12 integral of one over x squared plus two x plus five dx. And then we can solve these out. So I'll get from that, I'll get a negative three log of x plus one plus a three halves log of x squared plus two x plus five. And then for the last term, we need the fact this is x plus one squared plus four so it's a trig sub for x plus one equaling two tangent theta, turns into an arctan. So I'm gonna end up with a 12 over two inverse tangent of x plus one over two plus c. You can make that a six if you wanted, but then that's your answer you get for this problem. So the integration step is still as complicated as it was before, dealing with the u subs and the trig sub sort of stuff. But the point is complex numbers let's get to the constants a little bit quicker. And it's even quicker if it's not something like this and it's just like x squared plus nine or something, it gets even faster the constant than before. There's our first view as to what we can do with these complex numbers in the calculus framework to help us out. And that's the idea of solving for these coefficients in the method of partial fractions a lot easier because now I can plug in numbers to actually make my irreducible quadratic go to zero, allowing me to isolate the constants I need to be able to solve out for them and then find these integrals using the partial fractions technique.